You always remember your first best fondly. Rob McLennan, prolific Canadian wordsmith, poet, page flirt. I don't know what you'd call him, but he has a way with words. Word on the Street Writers Festival, September 2007. There was this one vendor selling thousands of button pins. She had this one collection of pins with comments that you might find on your grade school report card. In tracks well with others, enthusiastic participant, makes strange noises. So I bought one that seemed suitable and stuck it on my lapel. She also had a whole bunch of political commentary pins. One of them said, I heart unions. Next to it, she'd spoofed her own pin with another one that said, I heart onions. And next to that, a third one that said simply, and garlic. So of course, that was the one I bought. I saw him at the Puka Press table and I knew I had to have him. I just had to have him, you know? Sometimes things just line up. Rob stuck with me for a long time, though sometimes he got caught up in other things and fell by the wayside. Then things started to fall apart and one day all that was left was Rob McLennan eats sand. You just never know sometimes with some people. But I was hooked. I got a hold of Warren at Puka Press and said, I must have more. What have you got? I must have it, my precious. So we met up at a bar and there was a transaction. I was there for the poetry reading, okay. Bill Bissett, Papa of the Shakalaka Dada. The Dada Data Dada. He has sparked more conversations than any of them I've gone for walks with. I can't count the number of times that strangers have come up to me and asked me, do you know Bill? Bill who? Bill W? Are you asking me if I'm a friend of Bill W's? Why do I look like I should be? And they say, do you know Bill Bissett? I tell you I've met his neighbor, a friend or two, people have seen him perform, other writers. And I have to say, if you're feeling lonely and grouchy, the best way to meet new people is to ride public transit with Bill Bissett. He is getting a little rusty around the edges. I think it's from the rain. And speaking of rain, George Bowery, Poet Laureate, literary representative from the land of gray and rain. It really gets to you all this endless Vancouver rain. In the rain, George Bowery changed more than anyone else. First, his last name went and he became George a single named phenomenon like Madonna or Gandhi, but he didn't stop there. The rain kept getting to him. First the G went, then the E, then he was just Orge, then Org, or O, a solitary vowel, the first breath, the middle name of God, then nothing, complete obliteration, the nameless lack of identity in the green circle of physical existence. Joe Blades, performance art poet. It would be best to read not just his words, but what he does with them. He departed suddenly, without a sound, not even a quiet clink of metal, like a leaving lover locking a door quietly before sunrise. 
When I noticed he was gone, I asked around, but they all shook their heads uncomprehendingly. No one had seen him. So I moved on, got on with my life, forgot what he looked like. And then one day I came into work and there he was sitting on my desk and it all came back to me. He felt so solid against my palm, so familiar, just like he'd never been gone. Jeffrey Mackey accompanied me to a friend's place for preparation for a group performance art show. One of the musicians there peered at me in that over-focused way only stoned musicians can and said, Jeffrey Mackey? Jeffrey Mackey has ugly button pins. And I said, How dare you judge a man by his name and appearance alone? What if I told you that Jeffrey Mackey kneels on sidewalks with the babbling homeless? What if I told you that Jeffrey Mackey has rhythms in his hips when he reads poetry? What if I told you that Jeffrey Mackey has stayed solid with me through everything? Really, I said none of this. I just smiled and shook my head. I've had no adventures with Jeffrey. Yet. He is stable, stays put, so I'm just waiting for the day he pops loose. The Canadian poet, he has rhythm in his hips. He sparks conversations with strangers. He leaves without a sound, returns like he's never been gone. He loses his name in the rain, disintegrates. He eats sand and garlic.